Hey everyone, it's I Talk Apple, and today I'm reviewing and giving you an overview of Aperture 3 for the Mac. Aperture 3 is Apple's professional photo editing and management software. So every Mac comes with iPhoto as a part of the iLife suite, and it's great for organizing your photos, tagging people in them. Um, seeing where you took them, and even doing a little bit of editing. But Aperture goes way above and beyond iPhoto, and it's great if iPhoto is getting a little boring for you and you need more features. So I'm going to launch Aperture. And it loads pretty quickly, unless you have like tons of pictures, and obviously it will take a little longer. And I'll give you an overview of the interface and some organization features first. So as you can see, you've got a lot of stuff here that you can mess around with. And you've got a lot of options, but the interface isn't cluttered, it's clean, just like pretty much every other Apple application. So at the top left, you've got buttons with access to importing folders, creating a new project or album or book and then you've got your sharing options. On the left side is a column with three tabs. The library tab is where you can access all of your photos. You can see it's sorted in many different ways such as projects or if you go to the projects and albums section it shows your projects with the albums within the projects. So how it kind of works is you have projects and then you can create albums within projects to I guess sort photos within the projects. For example, I have a Hawaii, al uh, a Hawaii project, but I've also got an album within it with just the pictures that I took on my iPhone in Hawaii. So it's useful so I can distinguish between the iPhone pictures and the digital camera pictures. And then you can also store like books that you're making that are related to that project, of course. So it's really nice organization. And then there's also smart folders. For example, the one star or better folder is my personal favorite because I only rate pictures that I like in general and then obviously my ratings increase as they get better so for five star photos those are going to be my favorite photos so once you're viewing a picture you've got different view options this particular one is just called viewer because all you can see is the picture and there's a split view option which lets you see the picture that you're working on along with more pictures from that project on the bottom and then you can you know choose the picture you're going to edit really easily and then there's the browser view which gives you an overview of every single picture in that particular folder project or album just like with iPhoto Aperture also has the faces and places features you can really go crazy with organization in Aperture a lot of the organization is done in the metadata tab because this is where you can actually edit information about the picture and also find information about the camera that you use. So for example, I'll just select this picture and I can see it's taken with a Nikon D40. It shows the f-stop, shows the ISO, um, it shows the image format which happens to be JPEG, um, and it even shows the focus points. You can also rate your picture and then edit things like the version name, add a caption if it's got some special meaning to you, add keywords so it's easy to find later when you're searching for something, um, a title, and then it shows you more information about the picture like the date, the pixel size, file size, things like that. Okay, now for the main part of this review, editing options, editing features. So. The Adjustments tab is where most of your editing is done. You have presets, which are really useful for people who just want to quickly touch up their image or, you know, don't really care that much about the image, but they want to make it look a little nicer. So there's an Auto Enhance feature, and what I really like is that it gives you a preview of what it's going to look like when you make the adjustment, so you don't actually have to apply the adjustment to see. Although, usually it is better to apply the adjustment because, I mean, it's easier to see what it's going to look like that way. Um, these color options, such as cross-processing, are really cool. So you can see the cross-processing would make a really big difference with the color. There's a toy camera effect, a vintage effect. Um, there's also black and white um, features. 
but the main editing options are below so you can edit the white balance, the exposure, there's enhance which is for contrast, definition, saturation, and all that stuff. Um, highlights and shadows are useful to edit and then there's these advanced features. Um, one of my favorites which is really cool is this color feature. It lets you edit just a specific color in the image. So you can edit the saturation of just the green in the leaves instead of the whole image. So you can select the eyedropper tool and then select a green because I want to edit the leaves and then from here I can change the hue so let's say I want to make it look like it's fall slide it down and the, the leaves turn like a brownish color just like that and obviously it doesn't look very good but it's just to show you what it's capable of you can increase the saturation of that part of the image like that and it's all really easy to do with Aperture. Um, if you're using Photoshop, doing things like this might be a little more complicated. So here's an image that I edited just a little bit. I decreased the saturation of a few specific colors and it really changed the whole feel of the photo. Okay, as for retouching features, I'm gonna find a picture of my face and see if I can I guess edit it to make it look a little better. Okay, so here I am. That's my sister, by the way. I'm gonna zoom in. Actually, let's edit my sister's face. That'll be fun. Okay, so here she is. And with the buttons at the bottom, you can easily retouch and remove blemishes from a photo. So I'm gonna click this and select retouch. And I can take away any sort of marks or pimples that she has just by clicking on them and it works really well you can change the brush size the softness the opacity and um, yeah so it's really easy to do I can also use the skin smoothing tool to kind of give it an airbrush effect like you see in all the magazines which makes your skin look a lot smoother of course you can change the strength of it and the softness and I don't know if you can notice in the video but it makes a really big difference now obviously my sister's skin is not that bad it's completely normal but um, you can see that it makes it look you know all professionally retouched in a way so it makes it look really smooth big difference anyways that's just a quick look at retouching. Um, another nice feature is once you're zoomed into a picture, you get this little viewer so it's easy to locate you know, where you want to go. You can whiten people's teeth in Aperture really easily just by using the lighten or dodge option and then brushing over the teeth and changing the strength of that brush. So you can really do a lot and it's all so easy to do. So that's all I'm going to really talk about for editing. There is so much you can do. Apple has a lot of great online tutorials. I'll have a link to the page where they have Aperture tutorials, Aperture videos, so you can see what the application is capable of. That's it for this review or overview. Um, for the review part, I guess, if you want to hear some criticism, is sometimes with um, bigger adjustments, such as for the presets with like color presets like cross-processing, it takes a really long time well not really really a long time it still takes under a minute to do but you know sometimes you will get the spinning wheel of death or um, it may freeze up on you I haven't really had a problem it doesn't ever like crash but I've had it freeze up for a little bit while it's making large adjustments but other than that it runs well you saw that it launched really quickly um, for the price right now it is a must-have if you are into photo editing. Going over availability of Aperture, it is available on the Mac App Store. You can also buy it online or in the Apple Store, but I recommend purchasing it on the Mac App Store because it it is so much cheaper. You can purchase it on the App Store for just $79, and I think that is a great price. If the way your photos look is important to you and you like editing pictures, then you should definitely get Aperture 3 because it is a lot more advanced than iPhoto 
and it's quite affordable now on the Mac App Store for only $79 compared to the $199 that I had to get it for, although I was fortunate enough to receive it as a gift. But um, yeah, you can read about it more on the Mac App Store or on Apple's website. I will have links, like I said earlier, to Apple videos if you want to see more features and what this application is capable capable of. But I am so happy that I have it because I'm kind of obsessed with it lately. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you check out Aperture on Apple's website.